and everything turned out to be okay. However, my mind, my 12 year old or, or nine year old mind already formed the belief. It's possible and it's painful. Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Kate Semenik, RTT hypnotherapist and mind body coach. Kate specializes in anxiety, fears, phobias, and panic attacks. What's fear got to do with it? Fear is at the root of so many issues, especially betrayal. Today, I'm having a conversation with Kate Semenik, and we're talking all about fear, where it starts, what it does, and more importantly, what we can do to prevent fear from taking over our minds and our lives. Here we go. Okay, everybody, I am here with Kate Semenik today, and we are talking about the fear of betrayal because let's face it, there's a tremendous amount of fear. So I wanted to bring in the fear expert. So welcome, Kate. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me. Happy of, to be here. Of course. So before we get started, when we speak about fear, we're going to dive in so much deeper to that topic. Do you have a story or something you can share around why uh, fear would be something you'd study and, and uh, the top, around the topic of betrayal? Yes. Yes. I started to work with fears because it got very personal to my story. So I had lots of fears, reasonable and unreasonable, right? We have reasonable fears that will be in our life all the time to protect us. But I've noticed that I had so many fears that were these harmful habits that triggered me to behave, react, to make the strategies that completely, you know, almost destroyed my life, you know, and my family as well. So I feel like this is something when people say about fear of the trail, for example, it is a symptom, right? I always go deeper into the more underlying fear that is there. So let's talk about it because when we talk about just, you know, going deeper, I am all about getting to the root of everything because that's where it originates. I'll never forget. It was uh, T. Harbecker said, if you want to change the fruit, change the root. And that it's really true. You know, I remember this, this uh, analogy he gave. He said, let's say you wanted to plant, you want apples and you have a lemon tree and here, you know, it's the spring and all of the, the lemons show up on the tree and you want apples. So you take off the lemons and you tape on apples and you think you have an apple tree well then sure enough the next year you know it, it you have lemons again and of course that's all you're going to have because at the root it's a lemon tree so if you want to change it change you know change the root so let's talk about the root of fear where does that what is the root of it so first i uh, i had a huge fear of betrayal mm. um it showed up in uh jealousy greed, um, insecurities, lack of confidence. And I couldn't realize, I couldn't connect it. I knew I had this fear. I didn't know what to do with it, about it. And before you go on, did you have, was there, did you already experience a betrayal? Was it something you had seen in your family? Why would you have this fear? Where, where did it come from? Yes, this is a very interesting fact. I didn't have a betrayal in my life but I've heard a lot about it. Our mind doesn't understand if you, you hear that or if you experience that. Sometimes when we hear something in a very emotional state, our mind believes like it's happened to us. So we start to form the belief and then, you know, everything happens according to that belief. So I've heard and I've seen in my family line betrayals, but I've never experienced that myself. I've met my husband very early, and when I started to feel um, a very intense jealousy, so I started to manipulate, right? I, I became that toxic person that people talk about, and people start to kind of <laughs> protect themselves from these people. So uh, it wouldn't show up in, at work that much as it would show up in personal life. For some people, it shows up more in, in professional life, right? Right when they hold on to the team or, you know, they don't set the boundaries because they're afraid to lose someone. But for me, it was at home in the personal life. So it prompted me to manipulate. Mm -hmm. right? to so give us an example. So, so the audience understands when you say you, so you, you didn't personally experience betrayal, you had seen it, you had heard about it. And with that, you became very jealous, very controlling, and you began to manipulate. Give us, give us an example. 
For example, um, my husband would work late hours. I knew he would logically, I knew everything. I knew he would work late hours until 9 p.m. And it, I still created the images in my mind. Mm -hmm. Because when the mind has the fear, it will everything will become a trigger. Everything. Mm -hmm. The situation, mm -hmm. the the comment, you know, the the message, the the email, right? everything becomes a trigger. So for me, for example, when my husband was late, right, I already had that image in my mind, like he betrays me. Uh, when I would go to work, uh, I would have a partner who would work in the same office. I would suspect without without any any hints or signs i would suspect that what if mm -hmm. and just this phrase what if creates images in our mind our subconscious mind loves images so i would have images of betrayal what if they betray right. me so so you betrayal. have right so you have these images and you're and you're afraid and you're anxious and all of these things and then what did you do so the, t talk to us about the manipulation part so here you have this fear and really, it's just in your mind, nothing, you had no reason to have that fear, but you had the fear. And then you manipulated. What did you do? What kind of manipulation did you do? Yes, because my husband truly loved me, I could manipulate him because I would play a victim. For example, uh, you don't pay enough attention to me. Uh, you don't love me the way you did two years ago. Mm -hmm. everything changed so generalizing right everything changed do you see do you notice this do you notice this and of course for uh, my partner uh, he tried to reason with that he tried to find like everything is okay Kate everything is working out we have life you know all of these things were absolutely logically understandable but for me I need I, I went more and more and more so I would first victimize then complain then complain about my life right so I would my ego would wake up all of these toxic toxic uh, strategies mm -hmm. complaining uh, victimizing uh, gossiping uh, jealousy right so uh, distrust, Mm, putting the responsibility on him for our relationship very often because I didn't learn how to take the responsibility for oh, my life. Okay, and then show me, uh, tell us what you did as far as work when you were suspecting something with a coworker or something like that. What did you do in, the, in those cases? Um, I would not communicate clearly, mm -hmm. right? I would have the information, for example, or I would um, hide some parts of my work um, I would be very cautious. That would put a lot of stress. The body would put a lot of tension into being cautious. So thinking about what you need to say, what you should say, what you shouldn't say. And that, of course, uh, impacted my public speaking, my communication skill, because I always had to overthink mm -hmm. what I need to say in order not to reveal too much. Um, so there was this general not trusting the process, not trust in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So then, and and it has such a such a negative effect on and everyone around you, and then it's like this negative spiral. So at what point was there was there something that happened, or was there an instance where you realized I'm just creating? all of this in my mind, because our listeners and viewers, they've, for the most part, experienced betrayal. So they have that real felt experience. And with that, you know, it's, it's natural, especially in the beginning before they've moved through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough to, to revisit over and over and over and over again, and have those fears, have those doubts, have that everything was in your case, as far as work and as far as your husband, was there a moment where you said, what the heck am I doing? Nothing even happened. Let me let me do something differently. Or was it just an insight, an awareness, an aha moment? What happened for you? Yes, in, in it was an aha moment. So the first thing that I've noticed is I cannot be alone. So I cannot be alone. I need to be around people. So when um, the pandemic started, for example, being at home alone, um, I think I've heard it from my partner, from my husband, and he said, Kate, being alone doesn't mean lonely. Being alone is having time. Maybe you should learn how to be by yourself. And I can help you in that. I can give you that time. I can take the kids away. Just 
just learn how to be by mm-hmm. yourself. And mm-hmm. that's when it was a ha- aha moment. Like if I cannot be alone, I will always be afraid to lose people in my life. Whether it's by betrayal, maybe it's just a natural, you know, course of events, but yeah. I would be afraid of losing. Now, was it, was it like a, like a fear of abandonment? Was it a, a fear of something may happen if you're by yourself or just loneliness? What was, what was at the root of that? One of the primal fear, fear of rejection. Mm. So if I am alone, which means I am not needed. Okay. And we all want to feel needed. Yeah. More or less, we all want to be needed, either in the family, in business, in professional life. So for me, it meant if someone leaves me for any reason, it means that I'm rejected. And if I'm rejected, I will not survive. So the subconscious fear when we're children, right? We always want to fit in. We will do anything, any strategy, and sometimes very unhealthy, but we don't know about that to fit in because we know that we won't survive. But when we grow up, the subconscious mind doesn't know time, doesn't understand time. So the fear of rejection stays with us. You know, you can see where people pleasing can really show up right here because it's, and I see this so often where someone's, they go above and beyond. They, they, they exhaust themselves so completely feeling if I give enough then you'll love me and then I'll believe I'm lovable instead of, and of course it's an inside job. We have to do all of that from within, but you can really see where that shows up. Okay. So you realized you had this fear of rejection. What did you do with that? Yeah. I started to look for different methods, started with counseling therapy sessions, Mm -hmm. amazing talk therapy, um, self-development courses, books on how the mind works. Because mm-hmm. I knew that, and then I heard, started to hear one phrase that would go through every book, or every podcast, or every single uh, piece of information that I would hold. It will say, "If you cannot control your mind, it means that you don't control anything." Mm-hmm. And I wanted to control people around me. I wanted to control my body. I wanted to control my kids. I wanted to control everything around me because I couldn't control what's in me. So that's, and, and when you see, when you hear that in every single, almost in every single self-development book, on any podcast, in every online course, you realize, oh, maybe that makes sense. Absolutely. And the mind is, the mind is so powerful. It can work for you or against you. Was there one, one book in particular that made a really big impact on you? Yes, yes. It was the founder of the school that I went to, Marisa Peer, right? I am enough. Okay. So Marisa Peer, I am enough because it was a very easy read, very easy to understand without any soap around it. And it's just this talking to your soul. It was just talking to me. Everything that she wrote, it was like, oh, it's about me. Oh, and this is about me. And this is about me as well. <laughs> So that's when I started to feel that there is something under the fear of betrayal. There is something underneath. Right. And, and for those who aren't familiar with Marissa Pierre, I believe she's, she's one of the, the leading hypnotherapists in, you know, in the UK, if not the world. I mean, who knows? But she's, she does wonderful work. Okay. So, so that really hit you realizing that you needed to get get a hold of your mind and the beliefs that we have. It's so amazing how, isn't it true? It, and I say this to, uh, to certainly our listeners, but, but for, I'm thinking of one, one of my kids in particular, I say, you know, because she has a very uh, strong mindset and I let her know often, very often what we feed grows. And when you're feeding the negative, it's like you're feeding the monster and, and your mind doesn't know the difference. So if you have the most powerful mind that uh, can be, can believe something, why not feed it something better? And it's really true too. You know, we, we do get brainwashed. We really are. We're brainwashed by all of the people that we feel uh, they know better than us. And we see things and we hear things and we learn things, but I'm a big believer in uh, let's brainwash ourselves and, and really convince ourselves of beliefs and thoughts and ideas that support us and help us grow. So you read this book, you, you, you learn all these things. You can't control anyone but yourself, 
right? That's a big insight right there. So what, what, because this is a hard thing. And for those, con, you know, fellow uh, control freaks, I'm one of them. What, what, what did you do to say, okay, you know what, this clearly isn't working. I have to change my mind. I have to change my mindset and create a set of beliefs and thoughts and actions and everything that serves. What'd you do? I took my first hypnotherapy session. <laughs> Oh, okay. I to look back because when I started to learn that the subconscious mind doesn't know time, which means that it it's like your it regresses you back. Like every time I have, it's so fast. The thought goes so fast. I I won't even notice that it regressed me to that five year old or twelve year old or fourteen year old girl, right? So I didn't know that. So I tried. I need to go back and look at those events, but with the mind of a thirty five year old woman. Mm-hmm. As it's there it's unprocessed um and it could be painful absolutely emotional yes but i'm 35 i i'm ready i'm ready to look at that so we go back in the hypnotherapy session and this is interesting for for the audience as well to know when i go back i go back to that moment when my dad is pacing the room like fu- furious mm-hmm. furious very angry because mom is late from work and she's late because she had some stuff to do. Or maybe there was something. I don't know. But um, dad is looking at the window all the time. Looking at the window. Peace in the room. Very angry. He doesn't want to show us that he's very mad or concerned or worried. But I And I go back to that event. And what do you start? And the, the therapist is asking me, and what do you start to believe? Mm-hmm. That is possible. That it's absolutely possible. And that leads to this. And of course, mom comes, there is a fight, right? Argument, yelling. And um, yeah, and everything turned out to be okay. However, my mind, my 12-year-old or or nine-year-old mind already formed the belief. It's possible and it's painful. And it's something as simple as that. You know, it it's it's our interpretation of an event. And not only is it our interpretation of an event here where we're really taking on the feelings and the emotions of that person we care about. And we don't even realize we're doing it half the time. So I invite everybody right here. I mean, this is a really important moment to to think of. And I'm sure if you just took a moment and you journaled this, maybe just to journal it out and say what you know, when I go back and think of an uncomfortable moment. Or a moment that was a defining moment for me. What was it? Was it something that I saw? Was it something that I heard? Was there a, a you know something that was said that had me question every you know my my beliefs and had me uh, create this sense of fear? So was it that one moment for you? That one moment with your dad? Yeah, and it's very interesting that it was one of the first moments, maybe not the first one, but and so not not often that our mind will form the belief out of one experience, though it can happen. Mm-hmm. However, after that, mind gets the focus. So it will focus on the similar events, similar triggers, similar, similar experiences. And then we went to different events that will be very similar. You know, the relationship problems with my family, other family members, uh, the teacher at school that uh, that was telling about betrayal, like all of these moments just confirmed, cemented, you know, I call cemented that belief that, oh, this is very painful because I've seen these people and we calibrate with the world. We calibrate. We want to to know how they feel. OK, if they if it's so painful, that might, that may happen to me as well. I don't want that. And the mind is like, I'm going to make sure you will never be in that situation. The mind and decides. Yeah. And it's always about protection. The mind always wants to protect and the mind always wants to prove you're right. So if you have a belief that no one can be trusted or, or if I'm alone, I'll be rejected or whatever it is. Well, then your mind's like, okay, if if you insist, I'll, I'll, you know, find some confirming evidence to support that belief. So you, you, you did hypno, you, you were hypnotized. You did hypnotherapy. And how did you feel was was there something you noticed during the session something um you know that you noticed right afterwards was there a release was there what happened i connected it so because the hypnotherapy session is a big journey i did the rtt hypnotherapy session the marisa spear method right it's it's a little journey so first you look and then you change <laughs> so right in one session so then i connected oh this is why but because i am in hypnosis, but at the same time, I'm very aware, mm-hmm. very aware that I'm a 33-year-old woman. 
-hmm. with everything available to me, all the resources, everything. I am not that scared child, a dependent child anymore. And we look at those, we connect, we make the connections. We find what is that fear of rejection? Mm -hmm. Why? What happens if I'm actually rejected? What happens if I'm actually rejected? And I look, oh, I'm 33. There's nothing bad, really. There isn't, it's not the end of the world. At 12, it is the end of the world. For the child, it feels like, oh, then I'm not going to survive by myself. But at 33, I was like, I'll, I'll be fine. So, okay, okay, so you, right. So you put it together and you were able to release it. So what what are the steps? If you were to, to say, what are the steps to release the fear uh, from betrayal? What would those steps be? First of all, my, my biggest advice is to open your mind to look at those events. I've heard so many people, and I'm sure you did as well, who says, I don't want to look back. Mm -hmm. I don't want to look back. I don't want, I want to like bury it as deep as it's, it's in the past. It doesn't matter. Yes, maybe. No one knows. Maybe it doesn't matter. But for me, it did. And it triggered me. And it gave me all of these toxic strategies mm -hmm. and behaviors. And, and I didn't want that. So open mind, be open because you, if you are an adult, you can absolutely look at those events and you can understand them. Yes, it can be emotional, it can be painful, but at the same time, if you reframe that in one sitting, sitting right, in one session, then it feels very liberating. So, yeah. okay. So step one is open your mind. Is there another open step? Your mind. Yeah. Open your mind, look at it, connect how that strategy at nine or 12, that belief is playing out right now. Mm -hmm. The third step that I usually do is imagine that that happens right now. What okay. can you do now that you couldn't do at nine? How okay. can, what can you do now that you couldn't do at nine or 12 or 14 at 16 or even 25 or 28? And usually people who had, by the way, betrayals in their life they will say, oh, I actually now understand what kind of people I don't want to connect my life to. What so I love about, yeah, what I love about step three is it's very empowering. It's how do I, how do I now do something different as an adult with what I know now? What can I do that's different than what I would have done or that I did in the past? Yes. In that light, relaxed state, when people in the session or they can do them by themselves they can self-hypnotize themselves just closing their eyes relaxing and they can do that by themselves but what they do they close their eyes the outer world kind of disappears they go inwards and they're able to really look into it and to be honest with themselves mm -hmm. okay so step one is open your mind to look at the event be willing to look at the past step two is connect um uh, this how how that's what happened long ago plays yes. out now, mm -hmm. and step three is um, imagine having it imagine it happening now. What would you do differently? Is there a fourth step, or is that it? Yeah, I would call the first step is the liberation, right? Reframe. You call it breakthrough. Mm -hmm. so that's when you actually understand why you had that experience, why you need what it is, what does it give you? In mm -hmm. every experience, there is a resource bad or good, painful or not emotional. So there is a resource. And for me, I look back and I say, oh, what if it's a sign that I need to step into my confidence, self-love, self-care, whatever, self-belief, self-worth. What if it was a push? Here you go. Go find yourself. Right, got <laughs> so it. We stay by ourselves. You know, when we feel betrayal, for example, someone um, left us, we lose someone, right? We feel like, oh, this is the end, but we need that time. Mm -hmm. So seeing exactly. every single stage in our life as a needed experience. Mm -hmm. Because okay. we want to cross bad things. If, if it's something good that happens in our life, we're like, oh, yes, that's me. That's me. When something bad happens, we're like, oh, no, that's not me. That's someone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's also us, right? So it, especially when we grow up. And we have that ability to choose and to reflect and to analyze. Right. And it's looking at these things as opportunities for sure. What do you want to make sure everyone knows as we wrap up? Yeah. Uh, first of all is learning how to be by ourselves. Mm -hmm. I would say this is the first step, learning how to be by ourselves comfortably. That is like a skill, like we are learning to drive. 
This is like learning how to be comfortably by ourselves. What if I have no one? If I have no partner and no kids, everyone left the house or I lost them or what will happen? Will I be able to move on? Will I be able? Will it be painful? Yes. Will I be able to survive? And most of the clients say yes. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Kate, where do we where do we go to learn more about you and the great work you do? Yeah, I have a, a huge <laughs> social presence, let's just say. I have mo- more than 250 videos on YouTube, right, where they can learn about any fear, fear of failure, rejection, abandonment, loneliness, everything, uh, from the subconscious point, right, from that deeper. Uh, also, I'm very active on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and as well, I have a website where people contact me and find more information, yeah. Great. And we'll have everything in the show notes. Kate, I want to thank you so much for your time, for your wisdom. I know uh, our audience got so much out of it. Thank you. Hypnotherapy can be a powerful tool to discover something so deeply buried that's preventing you from being the person you want to be. Stay in touch with Kate by visiting her at katesemenik.com and we'll have all of her information in the show notes at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. It's always important to get to the root to see what's driving a particular behavior so that you can change it. And Kate gave us three ways to do that. One, liberation reframe. Open your mind and be willing to look at the past to see how you may have misinterpreted something or how something happened and it created a painful memory for you that finds a way to show itself in your interactions now. Two, connect. See how a strategy from long ago is playing itself out now. Three, imagine that same scenario happening now. Would you do something differently? How would you interpret that same thing? What meaning would you make from the same experience? It's so empowering when we rewrite the story. Maybe it was something truly abusive or painful. That still doesn't mean it was your fault, you were wrong, bad, or any other meaning you may have given the situation. But it does mean from where you are right now, you can see that and you can see that it had nothing to do with you. It wasn't even about you and you don't need to carry the pain anymore. Of course, we're here to help because this isn't something to do alone. Be sure you have support. And of course, our coaches and practitioners can help you too. We have coaches who help release stored trauma, the aftermath of abuse, help you change your beliefs so you can start thinking and acting differently, and so much more. It's all waiting for you. Just go to the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, thepbtinstitute.com, and let us help you ASAP. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time, and here's to your breakthrough. Breakthrough.